plant, 879 pages, 33 days, is the latest film by Ruth Höflich, a Melbourne-based visual artist from Germany. The film, which has its international premiere at IFFR, marks her first appearance at the festival. Xavier Garcia Bardon lectures at the École de Recherche Graphique, ERG, and is a former film curator at Beaux-Arts Cinema. He has conducted extensive research on the history of the Experimental Film Festival at Knokke Le Zoute, 1949 until 1974, to which he has also devoted several film programs and publications. Let's maybe start with what seems to be the starting point and the central element to this work, which is the transcript of a witch trial which took place in the early 18th century in Germany. And I guess one of the last ones in, in history in that area. Right. Um, and the transcript was found in the in 1980s in a family property, your family. So yeah. can you maybe um, tell us how, how the, the transcript was found and what was the importance of this trial and the connection with your family? Yeah, so um, the, it's, the trial is connected to a, a property that is in my, mother, in my mother's family. Uh, over many generations and um, she spent part of her childhood there and so she always had this connection to the place and she still has a sort of small apartment in there and uh, I guess at some point she just uh, was it has an archive so it is a archive that documents the history of the place and uh, at some point she just uh, found it and because because of the emotive story, it sort of uh, piqued her interest and then she started looking into it. So um, it was kind of by coincidence. And um, yeah, it was probably one of the later, uh, one of the last regional cases for sure. And um, it, the actual trial also involved, um, I think, um, people from Tübingen because it was a larger, so this is in the southwest of Germany kind of roughly near Stuttgart. And um, so it, the significance is a little bit larger than just the village, but also not that much larger. So it was kind of contained within there. Um, what else can I say about it? Yeah, like then some historians kind of worked on the whole thing and it got sort of translated into a readable text at some point, which part of it I'm using a little bit in the film as well. Well, were you aware of that uh, historical uh, anecdote when you were a child or how did you um, learn yeah. about it? Yeah, well, it was kind of this, um, I would sometimes spend time in the holidays there and we would sort of almost um, play with that idea of that there was a witch. And um, so almost like this ghost that was haunting the building. And so it was in a more playful way. Um, that I remember it, but it was always something that I wanted to kind of look into a bit more and uh, work with at some point. So it was been on the back of my mind for a long time. Your, your video actually combines all these uh, elements. I mean, there is the historical uh, anecdotes and then these personal memories, childhood memories. Um, and the video combines these different layers by bringing these elements together in a very complex way also. so. There is the anecdote which is discussed by your mother uh, and yourself. Mm. And then um, photographs, um, also some moving images, uh, um, family, family video, family footage. How did you combine all these elements in such a complex way? I mean, the photographs, the, the actual photographs that um, feature in the film there they were actually connected to that building so it's like either they were taken there or they document um, details or objects in there um, and then other footage comes in sort of at a later stage um, the, the some of the video footage is shot in other places and partly because I often work with this um, like I, I keep a general stock, like I constantly document and film things. And so I can pull in other things that I so um, work with 
when I feel that the piece needs it or that the rhythm needs it or the pacing. But the the sort of main core of the images is is that is connected to the place very much. Yeah, the complexity of the editing almost reminded me uh, um, a film by Peter Kubelka, uh, Unsere Afrika Reis, in the, the way that you mm. find such, such a diversity of, of elements in a in a refined um, editing kind of way. Uh, I had the feeling that the um, that the video also was dealing somehow with the impossibility of uh, accessing history, of accessing the event itself. Um, mm. You have this like special way of revealing and or hiding information, which is something I also got the feeling of in, in your former uh, videos. Uh, that's one thing. And then the event um, is, of course, uh, non-accessible, but always mediated through uh, images that belong to different um, different times and have been shot in different medium, have different connotations. So it's also um, the 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 work also emphasizes that for me, like all these layers, all these um, layers that you have to go through to access a fact. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's um, that's definitely there. Um, there's also kind of this um, idea of how do you access um, a history within a family lineage that is invisible and that um, a pattern that you're kind of part of, but um, it's not directly connected to you, but it's sort of a longer history that, um, and so how do you access that? It's almost like the images aren't really speaking of that. It's more the rhythm and the pace that's created around them that where something sort of emanates that's maybe more um, more on a sensorial knowledge or a somatic knowledge or something like that, where um, I'm kind of using the the footage to speak about more almost like um, an emotional connection that my mother say has to that building, but it's um, that would then also speak to the longer history of the building or something like that, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, the different sort of um, the the different kind of digital like this. There's, there's these different um, uh, textures, of course, in all the images, like the, the the digital and the actual print. And that I think for me, they also just in a way that all constantly coexists. Anyways, it's sort of a space that you're you're in. It's just um, that it sort of has no. It's not given a particular hierarchy in the film. It's sort of all there simultaneously. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not only about the images, as I said before, but also all these um, uh, audio and video elements that make the technology uh, over present everywhere. Yeah. Like the computer, the computer mouse, the um, uh, the sound of uh, of an image being printed uh, uh, from the computer, etc. Yeah, all the processing is kind of present. And I think it's because also I'm thinking a lot about how these sort of patterns get established, these histories get established. And I think the um, the way we think about um, like the, 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 the process of pattern making is sort of something very present now, I think, because if we think of computers, you know, um, uh, machine learning and all these things. And sort of we do that innately as well as uh, as people. We we establish patterns, and then it's um, it's how we we function through the memory and the re repetition of them. And so I'm kind of also interested in that process and highlighting that kind of mechanism in the film. How, how important was the the um, the relationship with your mother, which is also central to this to this video? And how how did you involve her in the in the making? Yeah, so my mother was um, the main interview it was actually done in Australia when my, my when my ma mother was visiting me, and um, and so it, there's no team, so it's just me and my mother. The whole thing is uh, basically the whole film is is uh, done without team, and so we would just have these conversations that I recorded, and then build on them and have another one, and um, sort of it was built really organically, like in a way she the way she would tell me a story and i would just ask questions and then over a period of time it sort of 
I I selected the the final um, edit of that. And um, at, in in kind of hindsight, I also thought about this, like on some level the this other country that I live in now, which is Australia, is also also feeds into the film, and I mention it as well that is filmed there in part. And I think thinking of my sort of maternal lineage also made me think about this trajectory of Europeans coming here and trauma being inflicted here and sort of kind of being part of an involuntary narrative in, in that respect as well. And um, so, yeah, it was filmed in this place here. There are so many images of plants and animals in, um, in the video. This seemed to have been shot in what I guess is the property garden right some of them yeah and then a lot of the plants are actually filmed here in australia right the iguana i guess also the the lizard yeah the lizard, sorry. and yeah yeah oh, it is, yeah it's the, very exactly. big <laughs> yeah i mean the i often work have animals feature in my films and um i like that they're kind of they remind us of this sort of things we can't, we don't have access to, we really can look at and learn from, but we don't fully have access to. So it's just sort of unknown. It's almost um, uh, like there's, there's, a, there's some sort of excess that you, that remains unresolved and uh, unsolved. Yeah, the, the reason why I mentioned this, this element uh, is uh, because I, I wanted to talk about gardening because mm which is a recurring motif in, in, in the work uh, and seems to echo the fact that um, the presumed witch was also called a plant woman. And the video yeah. seems to create this connection between her and maybe you and your mother or the people working in the garden, creating a continuity uh, between the so-called witch Anna, Anna Maria Wagemann and, uh, mm. and people, people from today. So uh the, the the figure of the witch has been recently uh revisited as a positive character uh mm. i don't know there are so many um, people we could name here starhawk uh, sylvia federici yeah. mona cholet in france the wicca movement what, what what um was that something that you had in mind this like uh feminist um uh, theory and uh, history writing and this um new place that is being devoted and attention devoted to the to the to the witch as a positive character yeah yeah for sure i mean i'm aware of all that uh, history and uh I, I didn't want to illustrate it as such as a sort of as i'm talking about that directly but i do think the um the witch as a sort of archetype of um resistance is something i was interested in uh, because she her like let's say there is an unorthodox knowledge an unorthodox knowledge that someone holds and whether that can fit into a system or not and the um persecution that can happen as a result of that uh, other viewpoint so i was interested in that and and also because you have the sort of different ideas of magic in a way that I think I'm also playing with this like the magical thinking which is the which leads to the persecution which is the um the um the superstition or the conspiracy but then on another level I'm in, I'm interested in this sort of um idea of magic which is more like a trick or an excess where something like say in the editing and with all the sort of putting together of the different materials something else emanates and emerges that is um, also a, a form of, um, um, yeah, magic, if you like. And so I, that, that I connect with that sort of positive character of the... The magic, um, is, also, the witch. Yeah, magic is also a topic that you investigate in, in other works, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, or like um, uh, weird logics or unknown, uh, the element of the unknown or the unseen. So wouldn't necessarily always call it magic, but I'm interested in this sort of that slippage that happens where something else, um, you, you pay attention to something else. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
until now your your, your work which which encompasses many uh, medium uh, photography and text also uh, your work has been presented mostly in gallery context and i think with uh, having monitors in mind instead of mm. a big That's screen right. the big screen of a, of, a, yeah. of a movie theater and um well, this is the first time I think that your work is, is being presented in a cinema framework. Of course, the sanitary crisis doesn't allow us to actually share this moment together in a, in a theater mm. and watch your, your, your work in a, in a large, on a large screen. But does this context, this film context, mean anything uh, special to you? Sure, yeah. I think, um, like you're saying, I would normally like it's the first time I probably made a single screen work as well. I would usually like have uh, work with different sort of the movement across monitors. So there's a concentration in this one that um, I was, I'm really interested in and also um, thinking much more about the sound in the room and working with somebody on the, on the sound. And so, so yeah, it definitely feels like a um, departure in that way or something that can maybe also move it's interesting to think back and forth between the two contexts i think but there's something about the uh, immersion of course in the cinema that seems very particular and special Ruth, the text has an, uh, an importance in the piece too um how did you how did you decide you combine different languages and also you use uh, a you have a special way to use the subtitles uh, and combining with the image. Could you talk about that? Yeah, I, I didn't want to use like a standard subtitle because um, uh, I was I'm also interested in the text really work interfering much more with the image directly. So it becomes a sort of uh, another layer to read like you read it together. And then also uh, because I've been working in this bilingual context for so long now, I kind of felt it was um, good to, or interesting to really use that quite deliberately. So you're, so rather than it being an afterthought. So the, the sort of being in a strange, um, like for probably the last 20 years almost, I've been in this sort of bilingual context. And since it's sort of dealing with a, with a biographical story on some level i thought it was interesting to kind of um use that as a as a cinematic space as well ruth thank you very much for your time and i um, sincerely hope we have the chance to see this work and the forthcoming works of yours in cinema context in a on a large screen and in different situations around the world thank and you very much <laughs> Really nice to meet you.